Okay, welcome everyone um, to this webinar on the return of video e-learning as DIY, do it yourself. So before we start, I just want to uh, just make sure that uh, everybody can hear me. If you can hear me, can you just raise your hand through your uh, through your virtual panel so that I know that you can you can hear me and see the screen. Fantastic! I can see lots of hands up. That's that's good. Um, that's fantastic. So. Um, uh, let's make a start, and uh, we'll just run a few slides on uh, on upside learning uh, as, as a company. Um, so you know, here's the here's uh, where we are. Upside uh, learning is is a company that has 200 clients in 13 countries. We've just completed uh, 10 years in in service, um, and we've got um, customers. We're based in based in. Uh, the headquarters is in India with most of the team there and we've got um, customers in uh, US, UK, uh, Australia um, including um, now South Af uh, including Africa and uh, you know, South America. So um, we do serve a range of customers across the globe and uh, are therefore fortunate enough to, to know the trends um, that um, customers want across, across the globe. Let's talk very quickly about our learning solutions. Uh, we've got uh, essentially Upside Learning specializes in uh, learning technologies um, and that includes Upside LMS which is our um, LMS hosted and also can be installed uh, behind your firewall. It has uh, three layers, uh, handles classroom training, online learning uh, and also social learning. So what you can see on the screen is uh, features, Facebook like features. Uh, we also have um, a platform that is dedicated to mobile learning and uh, performance support which is called upside to go so essentially it's an app that sits on your smartphones um, and can uh, push uh, online learning or performance support uh, learning learning bytes uh, and we also have uh, we built quite a lot of um, content uh, custom um, content uh, and, and you, you know, if you're, we're happy to show you some samples uh, if you are interested and we also have uh, some um, mobile learning courses which can be played on iPad, iPads and smartphones. Okay, just another slide just to talk about the, um, about the different awards we've picked up along uh, the way. So we're proud of some of them, especially Brandon Hall Award, uh, multiple years um, for multiple products. Uh, we've also been awarded the best uh, e-learning team uh, by the e-learning um, by in the UK uh, for the year 2013. Uh, we also recognize as a company by Red Herring and Deloitte as a company that's innovative and, and fast growing. Well, um, let me, uh, you've heard me speak, so that's, uh, that's my mugshot on the screen. Uh, I look after business for uh, Asia Pacific for upside learning, but I have, uh, I have the real pleasure of introducing uh, Andrew. Andrew Hannon. Uh, Andrew Hannon is a consultant and a media specialist with uh, Angel Productions. Andrew has a lot of experience uh, in terms of producing videos for corporates and, and learning and I'm looking forward to sharing um, Andrew's insights um, and, and knowledge. So look, this is, um, yeah, thanks Andrew. Uh, look, this is very much a very informal session. Uh, we've got a few slides to show and, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pretend we've got um, all the um, all the answers I can see within the audience. Uh, there are a lot of uh, some of them I know, uh, including um, uh, you know Alistair and uh, Chris, um, uh, Sangeeta and uh, Shashi. That I know they they've been in the e-learning field for a long, long time. So very, very much uh, looking forward to your uh, opinions and insights and comments. And of course, you know questions. Please, uh, you know, feel free to 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 send your comments or insights through the chat box. So, um, okay, so uh, let's uh, let's talk about the, um, you know, let's let's talk about um, a few things. The agenda for today, right? Um, the agenda for today is, let's talk about why video is returning. Um, video has been around for a long time and it has made a sudden resurgence uh, in the past, uh, you know, 10, 10 uh, to 15 months, in, especially in terms of volume. Uh, we also visit the implications of uh, reduced learning budgets and how video fits into a world where we've got less money to spend uh, on, on delivering learning solutions. In light of that, uh, we talk about the DIY approach uh, to video. Andrew will cover some of the nuts and bolts and also some of the challenges and opportunities um, that um, 
that you will you will come across. Um, then we'll kind of talk about some of the value added. Uh, activities that you can do to your video. And finally, we'll have a Q&A session. Feel free to ask any questions uh, you know, at that time. So we'll leave about 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the session you know, for that. OK, so um, why videos returning? Um, if anybody's as old as I am, you will uh, remember those uh, videos, the stack of videos. I actually probably still have some of them um, on, on, uh, in, in storage somewhere. But uh, that was a video uh, used. 15 years ago, uh, that's all changed of course now. What we have is uh, a lot of video being consumed on the internet through, um, through uh, YouTube for example. So let's talk about some of the interesting statistics about YouTube. So YouTube um, has about a billion unique visitors each month. Right? Um, and that's about equates to 6 billion hours of video watched each month and uh, there's a lot of content uh, generation or video generation that's been happening. Um, there are about 100 hours of uh, video uploaded every hour. Um, mobile or videos watched through mobile make up a large volume of uh, the, 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 the usage on YouTube. It's almost 40% of the watch time. So 40% of uh, all the videos watched is uh, through mobile. So, you know, certainly, um, certainly it is a, a very important trend uh, which we need to take into consideration for, for learning. Well, let's, uh, I was kind of looking at the statistics for the most popular videos, uh, and uh, look, uh, unfortunately, there are no learning videos uh, in, the most, uh, in the top 30 uh, videos. Mostly, uh, they belong to the illustrious company of um, Sai, Justin Bieber, um, and Lady Gaga, and the likes. Um, so, um, you know, let's, as learning professionals, hope that one of the, uh, one of the learning videos will uh, appear there soon on that list, although I won't hold my breath for it. We also have our own um, video channel on YouTube where we've got a lot of videos and uh, we'll pass on the link to you for, uh, for you to have a look uh, once you have a chance. So let's uh, pick up some statistics from Cisco who are in the business of networking. Uh, and we looked at some of the, the, the video adoption trends within Asia Pacific. This actually, what you see on the screen, is um, statistics for, um, for all types of media. and uh, the Essentially, what they're saying is that online video will have will will be will have the highest penetration amongst all the media for uh, residential services. So that includes TV, internet, etc. So it's going to be used by uh, most people and uh, in, in in Asia Pac. And the trends are very similar across across the world. Um, so you can see that the the percentage of uh, you know people watching online video will increase from 59% uh, at this in 2012 to 86% in 2017. And I assume this takes into consideration the fact that broadband will be more easily available, uh, smartphones will be more powerful and uh, uh, more popular. Um, the second statistic is that um, online video will be the fastest growing service across you know, all services. Um, so growing at a rate of 15.6% uh, you know, every year. Um, there's a little talk about time delayed TV. Let's not cover that. But video uh, on on demand again uh, it reiterates that 31%. Uh, there will be about 232 subscribers for that. So you can see that uh, the statistics favoring the adoption and the use of video is certainly um, increasing all the time. And uh, you know, of all the uh, you know of all the learning that we deliver. There's a lot of learning that we deliver through videos. So I'd like to kind of, you know, kind of all ask the audience to just, uh, uh, you know, type through chats, uh, and also I'll um, shoot a poll, uh, which you should be able to see on your screen very soon. Is um, the the question you should be able to see on your screen, and just let me know what your responses are. Responses are starting to, you know, come in. We've got about 13% who voted, so I'll just wait for a, a couple of minutes. But um, the um, the statistics, which I'll um, share with you in a minute, seems to be at the moment that 40% use it a lot, or now 36% keeps moving all the time. 32% sometimes, uh, another 32% very little. So it's kind of uh, split one third, one third, one third. Um, we've got 72%, so I'm going to close uh, that poll, and uh, you know um, I'm going to share the um, the statistics. But essentially, you know, you can see that. Um, uh, it's about 35% uh, a lot, um, 60, 
thirty uh, percent sometimes. So it's about sixty five percent use it a lot, and thirty five percent use it a little. So that is uh, that's excellent in terms of the the use of videos. The other question is uh, the next one I want to ask is. Uh, you know, how much would you like to use video? A lot more than you are doing right now? Some more, or uh, you're pretty happy with, uh, you know, with uh, where you are? And while you're answering that question, if you could also, you know, just think about what's stopping you from using uh, a lot more video than you plan to do. And I'm assuming some of them are technological um, constraints. Um, so I'm sure that must be it. But uh, let me just close the poll now and share the results with you. So we've got 48% uh, who want to use it a lot more and 48% some more, so that's uh, you know, almost uh, 96, uh, sorry, um, yeah, 96%. Uh, so most of us do would like to use uh, video a lot more. Um, and that's quite interesting. So you know, certainly um, the, the, the next follow-up question is, why don't you use more video if you uh, if that is the intention? Uh, it's too expensive, low bandwidth, uh, time consuming, and also please do chat in the. Okay, I've got one comment from Tony. He says the time to develop and produce quality media is an issue. Script writing is critical, and that's quite an interesting aspect that we're going to talk about uh, very soon. Is about the quality of video, as we are all aware, as learning professionals, or indeed uh, you know any kind of. Uh, work that we do is kind of dependent upon uh, the time um, and the money that we have. Time plus expensive, yep, comments are coming through, so I'm going to close the poll and share it. Interestingly, 17% um, say that um, it's expensive, 44% is technological constraints, low bandwidth. Uh, isn't it in interesting that we've got uh, better bandwidth accessibility at home than we have at work and hopefully that will you know, improve soon and certainly in some of the banks that we work that is a, a definite constraint that the bandwidth in the branches is low and therefore video based learning uh, you know, may not be the appropriate one. Um, storage space for videos until recently has been um, yeah, Ron, yeah, that's that's very true, uh, and it's still a question that's asked by a lot of our customers. Um, quality and uh, you know file size is an issue, and again we're kind of coming down to that uh, constant theme about uh, you know quality versus uh, time versus cost, and we'll cover that uh, you know in the slide a little bit later. Yeah. So uh, you know back to um, back to our um, slide. Uh, Cisco. Let's move on to the next one. Um, so, what are the user cases for learning? And uh, look, uh, I've put some on the screen. These are from FlexibleLearning.net, um, and um, you know, certainly record. Yes, but please feel free to send some more user cases that are not shown on the slide and you've used in the chat box and love to share it with with others. But essentially, to record face-to-face -face sessions for absent learners, uh, certainly this um, recording of this webinar uh, will be accessed by people who are unable to make it to the webinar today. Self-paced um, self uh, or, or extra material for self-paced learning as part of uh, synchronous courses uh, is certainly a very powerful tool. Um, shared video recording of guest speakers from remote locations. So there's a comment from Tony about bandwidth being an issue in uh, rural uh, areas and expensive uh, to produce videos and hopefully with the you know national bra broadband uh, coming into play especially in Australia and for example South Korea already has a fantastic broad broadband infrastructure uh, that might become less of an issue but it certainly will be an issue especially in the in the rural areas and you know certainly needs to um, be very smart to produce the videos um, support learners with literacy and other learning difficulties. Yeah, so video does, and we've used videos with some of our customers where the literacy rate is low, so where people can't read that well. Videos work really well, especially in terms of knowing what to do and how to do. So we built a we built a, a, a interesting um, course for. Um, people who provide cleaning services on how to use certain kind of cleaning agents and what worked best was actually videos. Um, you know, your normal online um, click next with a lot of text wouldn't have worked there. Um, Ron's uh, given another input, uh, record explanations for one student so that they can be posted for other students. Very, very true. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly people can uh, 
you know record their own little video and share it with others within the organization and therefore share the knowledge um, and, and that's uh, that's fantastic multilingual education that's uh, an interesting user case in the sense that the videos can be translated uh, so the translation of uh, you know the video with voice is is a little bit easier than uh, you know translating text um, so that's because it doesn't have to be word to word instructional training material for trades so if you need to show or simulate a certain action for example you know how do you open a pothole or how do you uh, you know plug in uh, a cable in a server uh, certainly a picture is worth a thousand words so it works uh, certainly better there support to walking tools uh, for workplaces for for training and uh, training induction again the same um, Tenor it certainly provides a lot of interactivity uh, and a lot of engagement. So video is one of the most uh, you know engaging ways of learning. Um, so yes, so let's uh, moving on. Um, so why are we talking about videos and uh, why are we talking about videos in this new avatar of DIY? Um, let's uh, the, one of the one of the reasons for that is. is um, Shrinking or flat budgets for learning. So we're for those who have been in the L&D field, um, and you know, please feel free to share your um, experience in the chat box. Is that anecdotal evidence? Uh, I, you know, I've just talked to a couple of people or a couple of companies where they've reduced their um, recently reduced their L&D team size um, because of various reasons. But the volume of, um, I guess, uh, budget or the budget for L&D seems to be decreasing. However, the demand to produce more learning uh, is increasing. Um, so more as more learning goes, you know, online, which is a lovely way of actually scaling your learning. I don't necessarily think it's the most, uh, you know, effective or the most engaging way, but certainly does allow you to produce a lot of um, learning um, and scale it up. Um, some you know from data from last year is that there's also funding from the government is is, is uh, you know reducing. Um, there are some countries in Asia, of course, which are spending a lot more on, on training than they were before uh, because it's uh, it's it's a, it's a critical skill and uh, uh, it uh, provides some competitiveness. There's also some data from UK which says that the the training budget per employee. Um, was was reduced, and this year I think it's going to be flat. Um, and similar statistics from the U.S. Look, uh, I think um, um, while I'd love to get your comments in the chat box about what your experience is in terms of budgets, but my experience has been that um, you know budgets are increasing for some strategic or critical projects. But apart from that, um, learning professionals are supposed to now deliver more learning with um, with less money in this time. Uh, so that's an interesting um, you know paradigm that uh, we exist in. At the moment, let's look at uh, some some uh, data from the HR Outlook report from the CIDP um, report, and it talks about what is the main priority for HR leaders. And you can see at the top, for both HR leaders and business leaders, it's cost management. Right, so it's uh, everybody's kind of focusing on on cost reduction or getting the most out of the money that they have. Um, the other ones are. Um, which are you know innovation, uh, agility, and flexibility of the organization, and exploiting new technology, productivity. They're kind of all, you know, talking about um, you know being more flexible and and you know doing more with less. Uh, but certainly, cost management uh, remains uh, the number one uh, concern for a lot of uh, business uh, leaders and HR leaders. Um, budgets are reducing. This is another one from the CIPD uh, report, uh, 2013. You can see that the purple areas um, are the ones where the light purple areas is where the budgets have decreased. Um, the dark purple is where it's um, remained the same, and the gray is where it's actually increased. So you can see that the purple is predominant, um, especially in terms of the, across the different uh, you know sectors. Uh, so it's a little bit more for public sector at this point in time than it is for private sector, but a similar theme running you know all across. Uh, I've got another comment from Tony. Let me just uh, let me just share that with you. Is that um, yeah, Victorian? Victoria, which is a, um, a state in uh, in Australia, um, I'm just sharing that because I, there are a couple of uh, overseas visitors uh, in in the webinar. The current Victorian uh, cut pushing more online and reducing options for other delivery. Good quality online learning may be similar to the similar cost, but uh, other factors such as gaining access um, to training f flexible. Uh, okay, I'll actually I'll just share that. I'll just share that with everyone so you can read it. Uh, there's a lot of um, of comment there. I'm sharing that with you. Thanks. And sent to all. So you can see the comment in the chat box from uh, from Tony. Well, certainly Tony. Yes, um, that is certainly true. Okay. So how do you make best use of a budget given the cost constraints? Um, is uh, use technology based learning? So it allows you to scale up, build ones, and share a lot of time. Um, the the upfront cost may be a little bit more 
but certainly you know it uh, does deliver does deliver more. Reduce the number of nice to have. So this was one of the recommenders from ASTD Economic Survival Guide. Uh, so what they're saying is focus on the priorities for 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 the uh, you know organization, um, and then pool learning related resources. We've seen that a lot in uh, large organizations, especially where uh, different divisions you know, kind of produce very similar. Um, you know, very similar um, learning without actually knowing what the uh, the other hand is doing. Um, okay, so um, and would again would love to you know hear any ideas about how you've uh, managed to get more out of your budget, um, which is which is decreasing. Okay, so we you know it's easy to talk about reducing costs um, and and doing more for less, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but the fact is that we know in life that um, there are intended and unintended consequences of every action. So this slide explains that is something that's uh, you know pretty typical for um, for a, a project um, is you yeah, look you've got a balance between cost, uh, reduced cost, time required or high quality. Something has to give way. Usually what people say is choose to you don't get a third. So if you want reduced cost and uh, to uh, and and high quality, um, then you require more time. Or if you want high quality and fast turnaround time, then you need to you know you need to spend more money. So just uh, just wondering if anybody has any uh, you know experiences to this um, or any solutions to this challenge where you can have all three. But in my experience, uh, you know usually one of three does give way. Okay, so um, if you know, uh, love to hear uh, you know some thoughts uh, you know on this. So let's talk about our ADE process and let's talk about uh, you know where the video process fits into the ADE process. So you've got your analysis, design, development, implementation, evaluation and um, what I've done is kind of a mapping according to the according to the, the video method video production methodology and Andrew feel free to jump in and you know correct me or add some comments uh, in terms of mapping um, the the ADE which we use for on for Developing learning solutions, and uh, mm -hmm. also you know, mm -hmm. yeah, looks good. Okay, cool. So you know, essentially, in terms of uh, video, you've got the you know conceptualization of the video, kind of thinking about what the what the video uh, you know may have. Um, also, when you get in the design, um, then somebody mentioned the scripts, the specifications for the video. There are, I think, millions of combinations of the video output. Uh, you know, different. Uh, types of te technical specifications, uh, some of which will play on the PC, others won't play. Some will play on DVD, etc., etc. We just, um, in fact, uh, we were talk. We produced a video for a customer last night, uh, which was fantastic on PC. Then they decided to play it on TV, and it didn't work. And we had to repackage the video, um, reproduce the video. So, Andrew, any thoughts on that? Just in terms of the, you know, the the different combinations of um, the the outputs that uh, can can be produced. Well, it can be it can be a bit of a minefield um, because there are so many, um, and the fact that the it's become more digital, um, so there are so many more digital outputs. It it is quite tricky, um, but if if you're sticking with some of the standard, um, you know, WMV dot MOV, um, and and then others which will work within uh, specific browsers as well. Uh, I know Google Chrome. Um, they, they have some preferred ones themselves. Um, so it's, it, it, whilst there are a lot, there, there are still a few that kind of poke their heads up above the others, um, which are fairly safe to use, I'd say, which, which is still you know, .mov and .wmv generally because of the operating systems that people are using. Sure. Yeah, uh, Tony's uh, sent a comment uh, which said that uh, have found MP4 best option for maximum reliability. And uh, what's your view on that, Andrew? I mean, does that uh, MP4 uh, is kind of quick becoming becoming the standard for videos. Generally, yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's slowly kind of moved on um, from from the the previous ones. But yeah, M MP4. I know that there's a um, there's a new. Um, I think I saw one of the MP5, um, which which is coming through. Um, but that that's to do with a specific online um, an online format. Uh, but yeah, just generally. Uh, MP4 definitely now. Okay, excellent. Thanks for that. Um, yep, and uh, you know, very much. Feel free to uh, share any horror stories you might have around uh, video production. Um, that'll be with with everyone else. 
Right. So you know, so here's a here's a mapping, and you know, typically you write the script. Um, then once you do that, you hire the actors. You know, get the equipment, get the room, uh, and you know, do the do the takes, do the shoots, multiple shoots if it's not right. Uh, once you once that is done, uh, then you kind of get into uh, production, uh, in which you do the video editing, add some engage, uh, you know, um, basically chop off the bits that you don't want, or add other interactivities in terms of online learning. It'll be maybe a quiz question or in, uh, inserting uh, a concept diagram explaining the video, for example, uh, you know that will be that will be uh, part of the production uh, process. And then, uh, you know, post-production process would now taking the video and then incorporating that into a SCOM base course. So, um, Andrew, anything? Uh, have I missed out anything in the in the process? No, not generally. I think uh, higher actors, hiring actors, um, is is something that. I guess for a DIY project may not be relevant, um, it, only because if, if you're trying to do things pretty much by yourself in-house um, from an educational point of view within a company, then you'll be mostly mostly using resources within that company as in you know other people who are working there. Um, but it's I mean it, it, it's it's the same kind of process in terms of hiring and, and finding the right people for the um, cool. shoot. All right. So let's talk about let's get to the DIY approach uh, pretty soon. Um, and but let's look at the costs. Um, and Andrew, feel free to add uh, you know to this. But basically, we're talking about cost for actors, uh, the video sh producer, uh, a studio if you require one. Then you've got the production um, audio and video. Uh, then you've got the you know equipment and software. So software itself, uh, you know. Uh, is not necessarily cheap. Um, although Andrew will talk about some of um, some um, options that you can consider um, a little bit a uh, little bit later in his uh, in his slides. Um, so, how do you some suggestions about how some of the cost tips could be reduced? As you can see on the screen, and feel free to type in your suggestions. Well, like Andrew said, uh, you can get somebody in your team to act, uh, and and they actually make very authentic. Um, they make very authentic actors. So Andrew, just your view on that, and you know, getting um, getting somebody from um, from from your team versus actors. Is there is there other pros and cons to you know doing that? Well, generally, it'll take longer. Um, so if you're if you're trying to shoot something with people that you know um, within your team within your company, um, it'll it might take maybe twice the amount of time. Um, but but usually it's the this. The clincher is the um, the director. I mean, which is you know, the, the uh, and producer of this of the project. Um, them being able to provide prompts um, to you know people who are in their team whilst they're acting. That is that's the difference between it appearing you know a bit ham on screen or, or appearing like something that's, that's quite sort of realistic. Fantastic. I've just uh, opened a poll in which I've asked a question. Do you think you should, uh, you would be able to shoot and develop your own e-learning video? So we're getting some uh, good responses. Uh, so there's some very brave people, uh, about 83 percent, who are saying yes. Uh, maybe they won't say the same thing once we've kind of walked through all the all the slides and all the process. Uh, and 21 percent, yeah, 24 percent is yes. So look, uh, the, the spirit is there to learn, um, and that's fantastic. And you know, certainly uh, it is something that we do in um, everyday life. If, with your smart cam or a digital camera, um, so it's kind of taking the next step from there. So I'm going to close the poll and share it uh, with the uh, with everyone. And yeah, I guess we've got a very enthusiastic audience. Um, that's fantastic. 71% saying yes, 25% saying maybe, and there's 4% uh, you know saying no, and that's that's fine too. Okay, um, so the other one is obviously you know you need a studio. You can identify internal resources like a you know quiet room. Um, obviously, it'd be great if it was padded, for example. Uh, in terms of uh, production of audio and video, you do need to learn some skills. Uh, and Andrew will talk about really how much you know time you need to spend uh, and how difficult or easy is it. Um, equipment. This is one uh, big aspect of DIY is very much using the equipment that you have. The good thing that has happened. Um, of, uh, actually, before I do that, I've got a comment from Andrew. Using a video camera to shoot our stuff isn't hard. Producing it took, uh, yeah, producing it to look semi-professional is much harder. So yes. thanks for that, and that's you know that's very true. I'm gonna you know share that with everyone in the chat box. Um, but I think um, let me finish this slide. Uh, then I'll. I'll Raise a quick uh, question to everyone, which I think is critical. Uh, and again, software. Uh, you know, possibly you could use you know free software. Now, the fact is, um, let's look at let's look at these three approaches to uh, producing video, right? So now everyone would like to have the best output possible, 
right? So where you've got the highest production value, you know, it also costs the most and probably takes the, you know, longest, right? Um, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you know, if you've got a really, uh, you know, if you outsource that, they can people can do it pretty quickly. But just in terms of the coordination, but also the because the quality of output is 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 highest, uh, you know, that's certainly, um, you know, it's it's just. Um, it's something that takes a lot of um, time, money, attention, care. But what you get is very good quality. And certainly, if you are doing, uh, you know, the um, um, the video of the CEO, maybe you know, that's the that's the production value that you want to want to stick to. At the very bottom is the home video approach, which is you know, which is the lowest. You use your camera, shoot it, um, edit it a little bit, chop up the bits that you don't want. Put it in the course and make it available, and that works too. Um, but you know, obviously, the production value would be the lowest. Um, the cost, obviously, would be the lowest, except mostly for your time. Um, and you can do it pretty quickly, right? Um, but what we are advocating is, you know, somewhere in the middle. Uh, if you don't want to, uh, don't have a budget for all the time for a professional uh, approach, because you want to, obviously, like we all said, we want to use a lot more videos in our learning. Thing, but again, don't have the time in the budget. A DIY approach is something that falls somewhere in the middle. Now, what the DIY approach has is essentially using the tools and the skills you have, and then for the more complicated and technical bits, getting an expert to help you with that. So it's not actually um, doing um, the whole process like you would in a home video approach, but um, you know, outsourcing some of the more complicated technical bits, uh, which you know you really don't want to become an expert um, to you know somebody like Andrew or Upside Learning who can you know add the interactivities, add value add. But the shooting is done by yourself. Uh, the production is you know um, uh, the shooting and the actors uh, are uh, from from your resources. So that's the uh, approach that we're advocating. Uh, the the broader aspect to remember, uh, and this is somewhere something that um, we learning professionals do get caught up with is quality, right? So the question uh, I want to ask is, you know, uh, is it acceptable now to um, to have um, videos um, which not necessarily of a professional quality, um, but something that that's more acceptable because it's been shot in house and uh, you know it's it's uh, not of the highest production value. So that's a question I want to think about. You will have to sacrifice a little bit of quality. So Andrew, while we're doing the poll, any comments on the you know the um, the DIY approach falling between the professional and the home video approach? Well, it's it, it's something I think that there's so much information about it um, online that the, the DIY approach is is quite you know achievable now um, because there's so many example videos and um, and and people generally will have. Equipment which is of a you know quite a good uh, quite a good quality um, whether it's a um, you know whether it's your tablet or your smartphone or or say a DSLR uh, camera so it's it's okay it's it's not it's tr tricky just time consuming I would say that's the main thing sure so look I'm just sharing the uh, poll results and 55 percent have said yes so they want to try possibly the DIY approach so you know hopefully we'll uh, Andrew slides will give some pointers often maybe depending upon you know what they hear in this uh, in this webinar plus what they discover after they actually get their roll up their sleeves and get their hands dirty in terms of uh, producing uh, a DIY video um, but certainly there look there are a lot of resources on the internet it like Andrew said though it does take a little bit of time uh, to understand uh, maybe the basic concepts of uh, of uh, you know videos and uh, some of the good practices which Andrew will cover in the slides a little back later now just a um, comment from Ron and also one from Sangeeta but let me just share that from from uh, Ron is um, that they okay been that <laughs> done that, have the scars and the gray hair to do that. Uh, yep, yep, understand that. Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, we also said that the student feedback from our Polytechnic say they like instructor videos, and that's that's quite interesting. So um, you know, it's the the facilitator themselves talking. I think people know that they're not professional actors, and they, it'll be a little bit um, you know, it'll be a little bit raw. But as long as it's authentic um, and uh, the content's good, I think. Uh, the, I guess that the point that I want to make is that. With social media, with YouTube around, people now accept that what they watch is not of the highest, doesn't need to be of highest professional quality. So if you can, you know, the, the cat um, the cat video on YouTube, which is very popular, wasn't produced professionally. It was just produced by, uh, you know, someone with a with a with an iPhone. Um, 
noticing something that their cat was doing uh, and putting on YouTube. So you know, suddenly I think people are now more accepting of the um, the more homemade DIY kind of uh, video. We've got a comment from uh, Sangeeta saying that even if video is done using DIY approach, the thing that matters is the output quality, the editing. So it depends upon uh, designers how effectively they can make the video look professional. And that's that's where the DIY uh, component of giving that to an expert comes in. If you don't want to do it yourself, Sangeeta, thanks for that. Uh, let me just share your comment with uh, you know everyone. We've also got Tony. Um, I've seen some flipped videos shot in uh, shot, in, shot in Teacher's Kitchen that just worked because the content was great DIY. It can look terrible, uh, but I think uh, the learners are more forgive, uh, forgiving. Um, there's also Ron who says that we suspect uh, the going the extra mile f effect. Thanks for that, um, Don Ron. Okay, so here's the summary of DIY approach is that it reduces cost using a mix of your time, skill, and resources and external e expertise where you know, you don't want to build the skills or it is a bit complicated, including some in editing, adding some, you know, interactivity to develop videos while maintaining the best possible learning effectiveness and learning engagement. You know, um, now this is where I'm defining or, uh, you know, it's my definition of quality and I'm defining quality in learning videos being uh, effectiveness and learner engagement. I really haven't talked about the production values in terms of having, you know, good looking actors, for example. Uh, it's, it's, uh, for me, that's uh, the definition of, of quality for learning video. So, um, would love to hear what you think about the definition of uh, quality as defined on this screen. Um, and um, Shashi has just mentioned that he uses Camtasia screen capture video, no camera. Yep, absolutely. That's for you know um, simulation capturing simulations. Um, so that's um, that's that's uh, thanks for that. Okay, so. Let me hide that so that I can actually share the, uh, the definition of the of the of the DIY approaches. Uh, there you go. Reduces cost by using your own time, skills, and resources, uh, and use external expertise as uh, and when required to develop um, learning videos, which maintain the best possible effectiveness and learner engagement. Um, so, yeah, so that's uh, that's our definition of uh, you know DIY approach, um, and. Um, so what was the name of the screen capturing software, Andrew? It was uh, Camtasia. So there are a couple, including Camtasia. Um, Camtasia. Yep, I'll send that in the, in the. There you go for it. A few that I've that I've seen um, recently. I, I can um, I can uh, post them later as well. And sure. uh, it is actually it's, it's it's a great thing where you're not you know you're not producing a video as such. But uh, I mean with you know being shot and with actors and things. But but you're you're really taking people through um, the whole experience of learning a particular subject. And it's it's that um, you know it's it's that movement and and, and that kind of approach which which is actually it's still greatly effective as well. So absolutely. Look, I've, I've used Camtasia myself and you can do some wonderful thing. I think, you know, apart from the fact that you're trying to save costs, I think, uh, for learning professionals especially, uh, and personally, I do find it a creative outlet. It uh, really makes me feel creative um, and, you know, you produce something that you've done with your hands and you're able to, you know, share it with, uh, with, with your organization. I think it also feels really special to make your own videos. Um, uh, I think, Andrew, do you, I mean, that's, uh, I guess that's a, that's something that you feel every time you make a video. So I'll hand it over to you, Andrew. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to have you know, talk about a few points of, um, of the need for quality DIY production and, and how you can really harness the uh, power of um, film within the education course. Uh, so we, we've touched on some of these already. Um, I, I mean, Stephen's really talked about it before in, in some of the previous slides. Um, that initially. You, you're really looking, um, the deciding factor of whether you're going to go something professional or DIY is, is the purpose. And uh, for example, if you're going to do something in-house, it's just going to be seen within people within your own company. Um, uh, you know, it could be a, a conversation, it could be an interview, then, then absolutely. You can achieve something which is a very high quality um, DIY approach and, and I'll, I'll have a, a few of the equipment and editing software and things um, in, in a little while to, to show you how that's possible. But and then again, if you're going to do something which is, you know, large company profile, it's going to be seen externally um, quite a lot. Then, then generally, you you want it to be shot, um, you know, from from beginning to end, it be done professionally. Um, so, I guess assuming that you have a project which is um, which does conform to the DIY and, and will be able to um, have something, you know, 
quite good uh, achieved in, in quality wise. Um, it, one of the first things in pre-production is to look at your budget uh, because nothing's really going to cost zero, zero dollars. You need to, even if you are just using people within the company and, and um, you're not you know, going outside at all and all, you have all the equipment on hand, um, you're going to have to budget for people's time and for locations and things like that. And that, that will actually give you a, an idea about um, how much time you can give to and how much resource you can give to the production itself is very valuable uh, as, as a beginning to pre-production. Uh, then you'll, you'll need to, once, once you've done that, um, you have to have a look at um, location and scripting, um, you know, how, how many participants you might need, how much help you might need. Um, as, as a DIY pro uh, producer or, or, or filmmaker, you, you'll need to wear a lot of different production hats. So being um, the producer, director and, and camera person. Um, where scripting comes into this, which is a really important part of pre-production, um, is that it will, um, it just gives you a, a base for, for what your shoot, how your shoot's going to go, um, you can you can uh, not only have all the content there um, written down, but also you can assign um, camera movements and shoots and framing um, specifically um, to every part of the script. And, and what that does is it, it just means that um, when you're shooting on the day, it's not missing anything, and um, and that it's it's quite flawless um, in its execution. I might uh, go to the next slide if I can, please, Jesus. Andrew, just on that one question for me, let oh, me yes. put you on the spot. Yep. Um, yes. If you want to produce, let us say, a um, 15 minute video, right? Yep. Um, and, you know, take a hypothetical situation where there's somebody, um, you know, kind of explaining a particular procedure, right? For a 15 minute output, how much time should uh, people allocate? Would, you know, kind of say it'll take me half a day or one day? I know it's a piece of string, but, uh, you know, just yes. to kind of give people some early indication of, you know, how much time they should be budgeting. It would, generally, if if you're so 15 minutes as a finished product, uh, if if it's very simple, like just someone uh, in a discussion talking to camera, then I, I would give it uh, between half an hour to 45 minutes in terms of the actual shoot. Uh, that that is taking into account that the person who's going to talk to camera um, is comfortable doing it. Um, so it is it's quite important having the right people. Um, for you don't, you don't want to put someone in, in front of the camera that's very shy. It, it'll take five times as long to get something which is um, you know which, which you can use. Um, in terms of pre-planning, I would say it, it, it will take maybe a couple of hours in pre-planning, um, and then the same in um, in editing. Uh, if if you are editing uh, something that is just straight to camera, then it's it's usually you're just picking the best take generally. Because um, you're not really going to switch between um, you know, transi transitions between camera views and things, so so generally that that'll be that won't be too hard. Um, always, I guess, always allow for a little bit of extra time um, in the editing and finishing process. Because I, as uh, I've, I've done this, you know, for, for over ten years, and I don't think I've come uh, across a project where uh, in the edit I haven't come up against a brick wall. Um, for some reason, you know, whether it be artistically or, or technically. So it's always good to have a little bit of buffer time um, within that. As that. Does that answer the question you did, Jim? Yep, I do. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Uh, so just, just looking at this, um, in terms of equipment that you might need to use that I assume that, that you know, people will be able to use for a DIY approach, uh, you have to, th these are the things that, that I think are essential to produce something of, of a good quality. So you're looking at a variety of cameras. You can use uh, an a inexpensive to an expensive tripod, same thing for a microphone, um, and also an edit suite um, in, in terms of a, a machine that you can do your edit on. Uh, sure. this, the entire process can be done from start to finish, including all the planning and pre-production, on a smartphone. Uh, however, it's, it, it is a little bit limiting. Uh, and and you'll need to in, in the edit. It's better to have it on a laptop or desktop, and most you know, most businesses will have something available in in that way. Sure, uh, Andrew. Can I uh, just ask a question? I see that uh, image of the iPhone with a little mic at that. So uh, could you talk yes. about? Uh, I mean, have you used that, and is it is it effective? Yes. Yeah, I have. It's um, generally with, with all these cameras, they they'll have a microphone um, included, but they're, they're never great. 
and uh, it's that particular microphone. I don't remember the name of it. I, 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 I'm, I, I can find that's that fine. out. Yeah, I, right. I know that it is. It retails for around forty dollars. Okay. Um, which isn't a ma it's not a massive amount when it comes to uh, a quality microphone and it's really important the, the, the audio that comes out is really hard to um, to fix audio in, uh, in in editing especially if you don't have very sophisticated um, editing cap capabilities and programs Okay, and uh, just in terms of, uh, I guess the you know the, the, as you mentioned, there's actually now software available on iPads and and iPhones which allow you to kind of do some basic uh, video. But you recommend that it's better to you know sit on a laptop and then do the editing because it gives you more screen space. Uh, yes, yeah. G generally, look, it's 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 up to personal preference, and you absolutely can do it on an iPad or on an iPhone or a tablet or a smartphone. But it's it, it's just about your comfort, I think. Of sure. Of, you know, sure. can you sit down and just spend a bit of time with it? Yeah. Uh, but there are plenty of there are plenty of apps, you know, through smartphones for, for editing software, which are very good. Sure. So it is it is possible to go on the field, right? Uh, remote place uh, with 3G connection. Take the video of somebody, you know, doing something, showing something, and then do some minor editing on your smartphone or tablet and upload it to you know your YouTube or you know, LMS as the case maybe if it allows that. So that that is possible. But what you're saying is that uh, you know it can be challenging, a little bit challenging. Yes. Yeah. And then, and for look, if 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 you're going to a, a music festival and and you're shooting something there and 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 it's quick and fast, and you just want to upload it. Um, and it's about the the content as as an experience, and then it's fine. You can do that. But it, when it does come to to corporate, you know, in in terms of a corporate education, um, you you want to have something that's a little bit more. Um, it has a bit more breadth to it. Sure. No problem. Uh, so. Once you've gone through, you know, you've your, you have your equipment. Um, just talking about the shoot, in terms of some of the things that you you really need, and and this will make a massive difference to to the look and the feel and the sound of the production. So, when you choose a space um, from a from a sound uh, from a sound perspective, you really want to make sure that it's the quietest space possible to be able to control sound um, while whilst you're making a film. Is is really important because, as I said before, it's it's, it's easy to add things um, in editing for sound. It's really hard to take out things. So anywhere that has high amount of foot traffic, um, uh, traffic from from outside as as well, any any um, uh, street traffic, um, things like electronic hums um, from machines and uh, and uh, air conditioning units, try and keep away from all of that. That's, they're all things that will, when you're in the room, doesn't sound like much, but when, you, when, you, when you're in the edit suite, you'll be, you'll be saying, what is that? Like, uh, it's, it's something which is, you, you really have to try and control as much as you can. Uh, in, I'll, I'll actually, I'll skip down to lighting because that's another thing that's you know, about choosing the right space. You, you want a space that is essentially is, is well lit, but not just from fluorescent lighting, Inside, you need somewhere that that is uh, has a variety of lighting uh, source, and and preferably large window space. Um, the downside of that is that you uh, um, you, you can be held prisoner by uh, the weather, and if it's a very dark day, then you might have to actually postpone um, your shoot. But sure. um, otherwise, you know, sunny day, all conditions good. Then having big windows, lots of lots of light in is is the best possible scenario. So um, just Andrew, just in terms of the the space, I guess you could kind of do it early in the morning before people come to the office. That might be you know a, a good good place to do it, a uh, good yeah, time to do it actually. Yep, yep. And yes. same with you know uh, lighting again. I'm kind of you know kind of choose where when the sun's coming in. So what you're saying is that in terms of lighting, have light coming from the window, but also have fluorescent light on at the same time so that you've got multiple sources that evenly lights up the face. That's right. That's right. And it does it do, it does mean that you can't you, you can't point your camera. Um, at the subject with the window in the background because it's just going to, as you see the picture down there, it's just going to make it too dark on the on the inside. Um, but it's not, and that's a small thing that you have to work with. Sure. Uh, and then uh, framing. Um, in terms of framing the any subjects that you have, you want to give them a bit of room. You want to you want to make it comfortable because it, anything that's too tight um, is it feels uncomfortable to watch. 
Um, so there's there's a thing called the rule of uh, rule of thirds where um, you want to have a third of the frame taken up by your subject, and then and then have you know the other two thirds with you know, whatever filler you, you need in it. Um, and that, that this is just it's just a comfort thing um, for people. People feel more comfortable um, looking at frames that are, that are composed in that way. Um, the last thing as well, which is just a bit of a tip, um, is in terms of recording, when you were there um, doing your shoot, make sure that you give a good amount of buffer time um, between pressing record and then, and then finishing your, your, your take. Um, it, this is a, it's a bit of a nitpicky um, uh, you know, detail, but um, the, the longer you give before and after a take, um, the, the more uh, chance you'll have um, or choice you'll have when, when you're editing it in the edit suite. And uh, oh, I just I just wanted to um, to say something. That there was a comment um, in, from from Shashi in saying that um, that the things that serve their purpose, um, in, in example, um, some of the TED talks, um, and and that's actually really good. A TED talk is is a, is a very good uh, example of of a, of a quality production. Um, but everything focused on the message and the person presenting it. Um, however, it, when you do see a TED talk, you you'll probably notice, even if you really look at it, that, that they have about oh, between you know five or more camera angles and different cameras um, taking um, the whole uh, t taking the whole presentation. So it, whilst it does look simple, um, the, the, the expertise behind um, shooting something like that is, is relatively complicated as well. Uh, so coming up to the edit suite, I've put together uh, a video, just about two online um, free editing applications that you can use. Uh, one's called We Video, which you get through, uh, it's a free app from Google Chrome. Uh, this has been quite popular with uh, with online editing, and uh, another one is uh, the YouTube backend editor. But if if you want to play this, uh, Jeevan, I, I have a little bit of description in this as well. Okay. Right. There should be there should be a little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think we'll skip that because I'm not sure how it will come through the um, through the. Oh uh, yes, the audio uh, hasn't come yeah. through. Okay, that, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I, I can remember it. That's right. Um, yeah, so we video. It's, it's basically it's it's a it's a fairly fairly simple online application. It's um, you've got a you've got a you know a video timeline there, and you can, you can put in various video timelines and audio audio lines and things like that. And it's it's from a if if you know editing from an editing point of view, it's it's not it's not overly complicated. You just upload. The video from your source. Um, you can add uh, you can add music into it. You can add graphics into it. You can add um, transitions into it between your shots. Um, so that's um, it's that's quite a good one. Uh, there's if you're able to play it um, just a little bit further, Jim, the the, um, the YouTube one might come up as well in this video. Okay, I think we'll probably skip the videos because it. Um, that's doesn't fine. Okay. Oh, no, that's fine. It's, it's a bit, a bit complicated. Just to just to um, talk about the YouTube um, version, this I think is um, for a DIY approach, and if you're confident to, to go in and do a little bit of editing, is is the best one. Um, it's got everything that we video has here. So simple timeline and your cut and paste, and um, you know putting your shots together with transitions. But one thing that YouTube has that other people don't have is a it's got a a resource of free videos, there. so Creative Commons videos that um, you can use for any purpose. And and the reason why I'm, I talk about this is that it when you when it comes to value adding um, on your on your um, your videos, your presentations, if you can use if you can find um, a video which is being professionally professionally produced on a subject um, which is available for free um, in in YouTube, then you might be able to cut that cut that in within your own um, videos as well. Um, for example, they, they have ones in there that give a sense of place, um, some very professionally done ones. You know, if, if you're in Sydney City, um, if you want to give, give someone an idea about what your location is, then you can put that in as a little beginner. Um, so that, that's something um, that is, is very valuable, um, in my opinion. Uh, so how, so what's the learning curve for these, uh, these uh, videos, sorry, the video editing suit? What, well, is it? I, 
I would say if if you are completely unfamiliar with with any kind of editing, it will be tricky. Um, it you they they've got good um, they've they've got good uh, helpful videos online to and and um, and articles to be able to tell you what to do. Um, I, but yeah, if if you haven't done any editing before, it's going to be it's going to be challenging. Uh, but not not something that's too complicated. I mean, it's it's fairly intuitive. No. Yeah. No, these these ones, particularly this this wee bit in the YouTube, it, it is they, they try and make it as simple as possible because it is generally it's it's for you know your your average um your average show um trying to trying to put a I think a video together not generally for people who are doing really really uh, professional um uh, co commercial productions. Excellent. Uh, so this this one we probably won't be able to do the video um, for this one, but they, I just said that these were two examples of of, of a bad and a good um, uh, production in my view. The the bad one is it, the the guy here is um, holding the, the the phone himself and it's very shaky and there doesn't seem to be any scripting or, or pre production um, development done uh, and the audio is really bad and, and as you can see that the lighting's not great at it at all. So um, that was what was bad about that one. And then the good what what I thought was a good production was a gentleman who was um, who was giving a presentation. Um, it, it wasn't good because it was extremely exciting uh, or was you know an amazing video in, in my opinion. But what it did uh, it did the fundamentals well was was just having a space that's well lit. Um, it's he is he's framed very well and it and it and it transitioned between um, a shot of him to a shot of his hand illustrating what he had done um, on the on the whiteboard and the audio was very very clear. So that's essentially that's something that I that I think is when when you're trying to achieve a DIY film um, that I think is is really achievable um, for for most people as long as they've got some of that just general equipment. Um, and, and that's just that's what I think people should be aiming for generally in terms of the quality output. Uh, and I think I do a couple of sorry yeah, a couple of I questions. Uh, yes, question sir. number one: Is it possible to edit DVD videos using these this tool? I guess not. You would probably yes, need to convert them into. It, it, is, it is possible. Um, yeah, it, it is possible. But you, you will need to you will need to convert it. Um, so you will need to put the DVD into your um, into your computer and and then get that onto your hard drive and then you'll have to upload the video into those editors. Um, okay. Can de depending on the quality of the DVD and how long it is, that that might be a time-consuming um, approach, and as well as how how powerful um, your your PC or, or Mac is. No worries. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we've got a couple of inquiries about the the YouTube backend editor. Uh, ju uh, oh yes, yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. yeah that, but, that's uh, right. It's, it, it isn't actually called the sorry. It's not not called the YouTube backend editor. Um, it is it is just a YouTube um, YouTube editor. What the way you can find it is if you have to be um, you have to have a profile on YouTube. So as long as you've got um, you, you, as long as you've got a profile there, you can go into your profile and then you'll be able to see through that. They have all these options of you know here are your videos. Sure. Um, and, and then and then the, okay. the back end. Actually, we might send them a link, Andrew, because we're running short of time, so we might That's all right. That's fine. Just like, yeah. So we'll send them a link. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, this is just a very, very quick recap. Um, that, that planning is essential. You just over plan things when, when you're trying to do um, your projects. Um, try and make it as simple as possible. Um, be kind with your lighting as well. That's just one thing that it, you're getting people usually to um, offer up their time. Um, so, so make sure you're trying to look, make them look as good as possible, um, and have fun. It's part of you know doing these projects is, is a fun thing, um, and it's with each one you get better at doing it. So, um, yeah, it's it's a great thing to be able to um, to, to undertake. Thanks, uh, thanks, Andrew. I think it was pretty useful. Got a lot of questions there. Um, so, let's talk about uh, let's talk about you know exactly. Where in DIY approach we, you might require some, you know, extra help, uh, where you know people like myself and Andrew would be, you know, only more most happy to to help out. But uh, you know, um, here's to to uh, here's the AD process, and then uh, you know where you could 
uh, do the production and there's also where you might require help from some technical experts. Certainly in terms of technical specifications, uh, there is quite a bit to it as Andrew has pointed out. Uh, you know, different, uh, depending upon your LMS, your browser, your bandwidth, uh, just need to get the, um, the, the kind of output for the video right uh, and you might you know, need some advice from um, somebody professional or hopefully there are some standards within the organization which uh, tell you which, uh, which uh, production uh, technical specifications you require. Uh, design, look, you're, as a learning professional, you might do the storyboard and you know, scripting yourself, but if you don't have time, uh, you know, we're happy to, to help with the storyboard and script. Um, shooting the video, I think, you know, should be done by you or somebody within the organization because that's where most, a lot of the, you know, cost saving is. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have got a good script together and you've prepped up fairly well, uh, you can shoot the video. Now, once the video has been shot, um, and you know, if you do want a little bit of interactivity or um, uh, you know some value add in terms of captions or or um, you know diagrams etc. added, uh, you know you could take the help of an external expert uh, or graphic experts to um, to add those uh, value add that will make the video more engaging uh, and more effective. Um, and then in corporate and courses, if you're used to you know using uh, SCOM. Um, tool to build courses, you could you know potentially incorporate uh, those those courses in that, or you know get somebody else to to do it for you. Um, and evaluation obviously is you know kind of you know entirely up to you. So, um, Andrew, any comments on on this slide in terms of you know where um, things might be done um, by the uh, by the user and where they might require some additional help? Any any other aspects that you think? Well, well, I think yeah, generally in the in the the actual shoots and in the editing. Um, so the, those are those are the two places. Everything else you you might be able to to get done yourself, and you should be able to to do yourself. You know, scripting is just you know creating a story um, essentially. So um, you may need help with scripting. That's one thing. It depends on how how comfortable you are with it. Um, but yeah, in in the shooting and in the editing, um, if you want something which is which is really really high uh, high quality, then you you'll need to get um, someone else, generally an expert. Fantastic, thanks, Andrew. So um, I think it's pretty much the last slide. But essentially, just remember, while it's all exciting, there are some challenges. You will need to invest some time in learning new skills, i.e., the video editing software, for example, uh, and also writing a storyboard or a script for um, for the video. Uh, you might need to spend some money on software, although Andrew has pointed out some free um, software, but it may or may not meet all your requirements. Uh, it can be a bit technical. I talked about the different standards, so it does help to become familiar with the standards. Um, be ready for lots of takes and, you know, big file sizes can always be an issue. So some challenges, but, uh, you know, I'm sure that you'll... Um, You'll uh, you'll discover them as you go along, but I think that's the end of our time. So uh, we've we've covered a lot of questions, um, and this question about uh, what is your definition of video quality and effectiveness uh, from from Justine? It was learning effectiveness and learning engagement for me. Uh, those are the two two important things, you know, is, uh, and obviously the content. Uh, so not so much the end, the, the polished product at the end. So look, thank you uh, very much, uh, Andrew and I are staying back. If you got any questions, we're happy to stay back and answer for other those questions. We also will have a recording of this session uh, and that link will come to you in an email if you want to pass it along to your colleagues. Uh, that will be fantastic. But again, Andrew, thank you very much for your time. I think it's been, it's been a quite a productive session. That's been great. Thanks very much, Stephen. Thanks. So that's where we finish um, from the Upside team and from Andrew. Thank you very much for uh, for attending. And uh, you know, to disconnect, just close your just close your um, go to webinar window and uh, you'll disconnect. So thanks, everyone.